Good afternoon, Wynne, uh, Professor Wynne Jones. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here to Cranfield. Thank you. Uh, from Harper Adams, uh, very esteemed and admired institution, leading institution in uh, the land-based sector. And I, I suppose I could start perhaps by asking you, in, in the time that you've been the principal at Harper Adams, how is it that you've brought it to be the leading institution for the land-based sector? <laughs> it's a very, very difficult question to, to answer. Obviously inherited a strong position, but I think if we go back a stage, I was the youngest of four sons, and I think higher education, certainly agricultural higher education and going to university, has meant so much for me and opened up so many opportunities. And I think the first of all was to recognise that higher education is about the students and the young people themselves and their aspirations. And again, I came from a, quite a practical background and I did the theory and the science, yeah. etc. afterwards. So I think is to try and get a curriculum that combines practical technology and academic. And we've certainly, on the curriculum, s stuck steadfastly to that sandwich year concept. And I think that's been a very, and very... It's worked. It's worked, yeah. and for an, it's, it's worked for us for a number of reasons. It gave the students a very clear anchorage of their learning with the relevance of what was required in the world of work. It gave industry an opportunity to see students for that sandwich, but to fund possibly um, an investigational project in their yeah. final year, yeah. so they still had a link with them. It works now that they offer a scholarship for that final year if they want to employ yeah. them. It gave us a strong link then with, with industry and business. Yeah. So the curriculum always had a relevance to industry and, yeah. and, the, and the professions. And so I that, suppose what, what perhaps characterises Harper Adams particularly is the sense of community, the esprit de corps that has very noticeable f from outside. And that's also sustained things and you've managed to, to grow that. I think it's, it's a place that really does feel had, has strong community. Yeah, I suppose that's the advantage of having been in a smaller, smaller institution. I, I mean, some universities practice a collegiate system, yeah. so rather than being part of a big yeah. university, you were part of a, a smaller group of families which, and people yeah. identify with each other. Yeah. Um, I think that's strong at Harper, and I think a bit like you at Cranfield, you were in a very rural location, yeah. so the students have to re really make their own entertainments with clubs and societies yeah. rather than zoom off downtown yeah. into some sort of bright lights and club land yes. and, and uh, that helps and clearly I personally have put a lot of effort in with the students union and the broader learning issues mm. if you like the non-academic mm. because that certainly has generated what is highly regarded nationally as the Harper spirit yes. but it's those skills of leadership, management, working in teams, working individually, being responsible in a community that are so important key employability skills Absolutely. at the end of the day and therefore uh, yeah. higher education is a, an interesting mix and I do find obviously there's lots of talk now with um, participating part-time living at home but certainly for me personally and for most of Harper students who come from fairly small rural businesses the residential campus experience of higher education is as important as the yeah. academic bits and, and, I, it, and, and it's working it really is I, I, I suppose numbers of students coming into agriculture has I think slightly gone up the last year or two but it's still quite low how are we going to get the you know the best students in into agriculture bearing in mind that you know we really need to improve uh, globally we need to improve food productivity quite dramatically maybe 50 percent over the next 30 40 years how are we going to get these mm. the really the really capable, bright people out of the cities and into, into the rural <laughs> well, environment. Well, it, it's a big challenge, and, I, and you make the point, um, obviously, to get young blood and new blood, but not necessarily from within the industry, because I could think of some of the some of the bigger farmer businesses now, and certainly mm -hmm. one in our county, and, a, and a, um, a fellow Welshman, actually, who has been on our board of governors, started literally with nothing, lost his father during the war. That's built a big farming um, empire, really, four or 5,000 acres, almost two million hens, turning over 40 million a year. And I could name quite a number of people that have come in from outside the industry. And we need more of those yeah. because they've no baggage, they've, they, yeah. they just deal with it as a business-like, a, a very technical yes. sort of venture, none of the traditions. 
um, yeah. tie down. But I, I, we've just got to promote our industry in a much more yeah. positive sense as part of a, a very, very uh, thriving food supply chain. We are now going into a sort of, um, if you like, a period where climate change and some of the issues to do with climate change and the knock-on effect on resource, natural resource yeah. management, land and water particularly, yes. mankind still do, depends. I wonder, do you think the last few years we've, we've, we've seen a, a renaissance actually of production uh, as, the, as a key issue for agriculture, whereas frankly over the last decade or more the emphasis has been on re reducing the environmental impacts of that production. Um, the concept of sustainable agriculture, I mean obviously balancing that, that production requirement with reducing environmental impact. Um, what's, your, what's your idea of sustainable agriculture? Well, it's, it's, what does it look like? Well, I, I suppose the NFU mantra is it is it to produce more but impact less. And, yeah. I, and I think that is the challenge uh, that we do have. Yes, I, I think there's more interest and, and farmers are held in high, high regard with the consumers still. And I think we they have realised that farmers have really addressed issues of animal welfare, environmental issues, and therefore perhaps the interest is coming back mm. now more on the production side and looking at farming, the precision of farming, so we make far optimal use of yeah. resource inputs. And more frequent, precise yeah, and, and interventions. Yeah, windows, and therefore this is where the high technology and engineering mm. comes in, because mm. we, we have... Um, we, we've lost a lot of labour from agriculture, but wherever I travel in the world, young people tend, on the whole, not to want to go into yeah. agriculture. So we'll never get the people, yeah. the numbers of people yeah. that the industry wants. And therefore, I, I think technology yes. uh, has, and science and technology and yeah. engineering, has an incredible amount to contribute to it, the industry in, it, on a number of fronts. If we look at the, the world over the next uh, 30, 40 years, and we look at the impacts of climate change and land degradation, linked of course, then we see that actually the, the area of agriculture in the UK becomes even more important in a global level. We need to secure that, not just for UK, but for global purposes as well. And yet, um, it's quite hard to imagine that we could here increase production by 50% over the next 25 years. Where do you think such production increases might come? In the animal sector? The, Arable sector. And how know, well, you've only got to where, look. At, where's the exciting? You've only got to look at, at the uh, allotments to yeah. see ah. productivity, yes. and, and it is interesting. Um, there are some farmers now that rent land for allotments adjacent to their. So, uh, yes. so we have a long time to go before we're that intensive. Yes, it would. It will be a fine balance, I think. And what we have to do is farm the good land very well and and uh, to maximum potential. Mm within resource, yeah. within um, the resource use. And again, genetics has a lot to offer. I'm, my background is a lifetime geneticist, but maybe the emphasis in future will be to use the genetics to reduce the environmental impact. So you yeah. will have to trade off production increases in order to yes. address some of the, um, or to get more efficient yeah. utilization yeah. of nutrients.